What is going on guys, Rural Legends TV here back with an FRT update video. So now, before we get into it, uh, I just want to say to all my new subscribers, welcome to the Rural Legends family. It's great to have you here. Uh, hopefully you find some entertainment in what we're doing here. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, if you're new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, I will be heading up to Pennsylvania um, the first week, or I guess it's somewhere around the first week of February. Uh, I'll be up there somewhere between like the 4th through the 10th, somewhere in there. I'm headed up there for the Great American Outdoor Show. Now that is an NRA show. Uh, and I am not big fans of the NRA, not a big fan of the NRA right now. Uh, but, you know, maybe we'll get some dialogue on with the NRA. There's some industry folks there that I'd like to talk to. Um, there's some, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of the big names that are going to be out there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, you know, ignoring the fact that it is an NRA show, it should be really good. Um, a lot of manufacturers did pull out of that show as they did with Shot Show, so I think that's kind of an indication of what's kind of going on in the industry right now. But anyway, I digress, we're getting away from what I was talking what we want to talk about in this video. But if you're going to be up at the Great American Outdoor Show, uh, hit me up Instagram, uh, Rural Legends TV or uh, email RuralLegendsTV at gmail.com. Uh, let me know that you're going to be around, man. Maybe we can link up and uh, we'll get you into the video. Um, you know, we'll do some talk and do some chatting up with uh, with any of the followers out there who are watching. So uh, anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes of what this video is about. We're talking about the FRT-15. Uh, actually, we're talking about all force reset triggers now uh, because I'm sure some of y'all have watched Crump. Some of y'all have watched CRS Firearms. Uh, and so you may have read the ammo land story, you may have not, you know, so here's what we know so far. Initially, Trump or Crump, not Trump, Crump, uh, John Crump come out and he said that, you know, uh, Rare Breed and Big Daddy Unlimited had been raided. It was all going down. The ATF was, you know, stacking up. It was going down. Shit hit the fan, you know, type deal. Come to find out that what the case. Uh, now, what we know now that's been confirmed is that Big Daddy Unlimited was hit. They did seize all of the wide open triggers that Big Daddy Unlimited had. Um, and But Big Daddy Unlimited is still doing their thing. Now, Big Daddy Unlimited claims they did not give out any customer information. We'll see about that. You know, the chances are the ATF doesn't necessarily need to use a uh, customer list from, uh, from Big Daddy Unlimited. But, you know, it is what it is. Rare Breed, on the other hand, was not raided. Um, you know, there's some speculation out there that maybe, you know, all the YouTubers, folks like me who jumped out and, um, you know, jumped on the, the news and kind of stymied the ATF and got them to where they were, you know, they maybe were ready to stack up, but now they've postponed the raid. Who knows? Um, what we know so far is that um, Big Daddy Unlimited was raided, wide open triggers were seized. Now, Big Daddy Unlimited's website's still up, I do believe. I actually haven't checked that, so if y'all can corroborate that information, please do. Um, and, you know, there have been no letters sent out to owners of the uh, any of these forced reset triggers. Now, interestingly enough, uh, we've gotten some ATF documents and some, you know, letters that have gone out talking about, you know, FRTs. So what we know is that there's supposedly a letter going out to police departments discussing what FRTs are and to keep officers in the loop on, you know, the FRT-15, the wide open trigger. Now, there's been a lot of speculation that these, in fact, are not going to police departments and sheriff's departments, stuff like that, that they're actually going to field offices, that these uh, letters are being sent to ATF field offices uh, for distribution there. Um, there have been no letters sent to anybody who owns an FRT. Um, and in the Ammo Land uh, article that was posted, I think two days ago, this is Sunday, um, there, there is a, a line in there that specifically states, current owners are not breaking federal law as of this time. So, um, this is kind of a sticking point I have with CRS Firearms is that he's kind of been a chicken little uh, in regards to this issue, oftentimes talking about, you know, the ATF is coming, they're kicking in doors, you know, uh, they're coming after every YouTuber who's ever shown um, owning an FRT, 
Uh, you know, I, he's been quoted many times or, you know, he's quoted many times saying, uh, if I was a, if I owned one of these and I had a video up after the cease and desist letter, I would take it down and, you know, have me tens of thousands of dollars stacked away and be ready to be, you know, have my shit kicked in and arrested, you know, paraphrasing that. But essentially what he's saying is that, you know, if you were a YouTuber, uh, like me or Whisper Tactical or the hundreds of other YouTube channels out there uh, who showed a video of the FRT-15, your shit's fixing to get kicked in. And uh, the, the thing that he often talks about is the auto key card and talking about how he got tied up with the ATF. Now, his ass didn't get raided. The ATF knocked on his door and said, hey, your girlfriend or whatever needed to come and... and testify okay whatever he made it sound like the atf kicked in his shit put him in handcuffs and hauled him out which didn't happen the atf just knocked on his door and said hey here's what's going down you know he's a very paranoid individual i get it shit happens you know atf knocks on your door i'd probably be a little paranoid too but for him to say that any youtuber who had an frt on their channel is going to get their shit kicked in is outlandish and saying that everybody who owned one of these is going to get their shit kicked in is outlandish. Now I've been kind of, I, I, I made a video a while back that, that I kind of had that fear mongering bandwagon on it. I apologize for that. I do. I made a video a couple weeks back where I apologize. I apologize again. I shouldn't have been fear mongering. Um, the more information that I'm getting, I'm, I'm letting you guys know. So if you watch CRS Firearms, take him with a grain of salt when he starts talking about this stuff because he's very chicken little and the sky is falling, you know, worst case scenario. He took a fucking SCAR-17 to Florida in a guitar case along with like five or six other guns because he thought he was going to be in a shootout at a hotel with the ATF or some shit. So please, keep in mind that he's a little paranoid. Um... And the whole auto key card thing is a little different than the FRT because people bought the FRTs in good faith thinking that they were legal. People buying an auto key card kind of knew what it is. Now, it is just a metal plate with a picture on it. You guys get what I'm saying, I hope. Um, so there's a, there's kind of a disconnect between the FRTs and the auto key card, but he's trying to tie them together, which I don't think you can do. But anyway, I'm getting kind of off topic here. So I do apologize. If you're sticking around this far, guys, I really appreciate it. Um, the, the rare breed company, which is technically two separate entities. You have rare breed firearms and rare breed triggers. Rare breed triggers is run by Kevin Maxwell and rare breed Firearms is run by Bonner Stamonico. He's the president. Now, he's often seen talking about the rare breed trigger, which if you break it down, it's pretty smart. He's the head over the entire company, and I would imagine that rare breed triggers is kind of like the child to rare breed firearms. They're kind of under rare breed firearms control, but technically they are separate. So if rare breed trigger goes down, rare breed firearms stays running, if that makes sense. Now, uh, Will Rare Breed be raided? I don't know. It's been, uh, let's see, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. It's been six months. Um, they're still selling the FRTs. They're still uh, innovating and, and talking about, you know, well, what they're bringing to market. And, in fact, they're bringing a three-position selector FRT to market here probably in March sometime or maybe a little after. Um, and a lot of people have talked about the TACCON 3MR, which is a trigger I completely forgot about, uh, which is a very similar force reset trigger. Now, if you look at what the ATF has talked about with the um, FRTs, is that they're an unsafe uh, uh, trigger, which when you break it down is probably not the case because that trigger will not fire if that bolt is not locked into place. Hence, folks who had bolt bounce um, and some of the other issues with the bolts not locking, uh, you had issues with the gun not firing. So uh, I would argue that the 
forced reset triggers are the safest of triggers, especially if you're running like a pistol caliber carbine. That's not the CMMG Banshee that has the delayed uh, blowback, wh whatever crap it is. I'm not sure. I can't remember the exact uh, terms for it, but uh, any of your regular pistol caliber carbines, you can get those out of battery detonations. With the force reset triggers, you cannot get those out of battery detonations. So I would argue that they are actually indeed safer. But I digress, getting further off track here. The three TACCON 3MR and the T3 uh, is the three position selector that actually has ATF approval. Now the uh, FRT15 is very similar to, um, to the TACCON, and a lot of people will say that Rare Breed actually knocked off TACCON. I don't know the specifics on that, uh, but you know I think that that Rare Breed actually did a better job with the uh, design and functions a little bit better than the TACCON does. So there's a lot of there's a lot of ambiguity here because you have the three the TACCON 3MR that is fine according to the ATF. Then you have the FRT, which is you know very similar. Um, but is not it's not okay by the ATF. So a lot of people want to you know speculate that you know all force resets are going to be you know done away with, including the TACCON. I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and see. Additionally, I want to go back to the letter that was sent out to police offices, sheriff's offices, uh, you know, uh, field offices, whoever they were sent to. They specifically note that the binary triggers themselves are not machine guns, then they are legal. So there is some differentiation there between the force resets and the binaries. So there's a lot here to digest. There's a lot going on. I'm not sure uh, what the future is going to bring. I've kind of had, um, you know, I've had some issues uh, with the information that's been coming out. It kind of seems like now the water has been really muddied uh, thanks to Crump's uh, resources or sources and, and what he he released, um, you know, you've got CRS who's, who's, I mean, he's Crump's buddy apparently. And he's just, he's pissed because apparently Crump's getting off YouTube permanently or not permanently. Who the hell cares? You know, the information's still going to come out. You know, you've got hundreds of YouTubers, uh, Team American Midwest. They're, they're putting information out, which I really like Team American Midwest. Um, uh, just really discovered their channel so team america midwest if y'all are watching hit me up let's you know see if we can't get in communication here i really like what y'all are doing i like how y'all put your videos together um so if y'all are watching uh you know hit me up man let's see if we can't get something going the crs firearms stop fear mongering stop being so damn paranoid my guy uh it's gonna put you into an early grave and you know Crump, you fucked up, man. You, you, a lot of people are pissed off at you. It is what it is. Uh, CRS Firearms needs to stop trying to, you know, salvage your career or whatever he's it feels like he's doing. Um, I know it kind of seems like I'm calling people out, and I kind of am uh, because there is a lot of misinformation being spread about. There's a lot of people who are one side of the aisle or the other, and they are, well, they're divided on this issue and they're ready to fight for the wrong reasons. Um, they want to fight in and amongst ourselves instead of actually focusing our attention to what's important. So uh, this video is getting a little long guys. So I'm going to cut it off right here. Uh, I just want to say that if you have any questions, if there's any concerns that you may have, please put them in the comment section down below. Let me know what y'all are thinking. Let me know what y'all are hearing. Um, if there's anybody in the industry who's hearing things that uh, can be corroborated, uh, let us know in the comment section. A lot of times there's just bullshit that gets put in the comment section and it gets shot down pretty damn quick. So we'll call you out if you're, uh, you know, you're talking dumb shit and bullshit. So, uh, but let us know what's going on out there, guys. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're going to be in Harrisburg for the Great American Outdoor Show, let me know. See if we can't link up get on the channel. But uh, until next time, guys, y'all stay armed, stay safe, keep your heads on a swivel. Or don't do them at the want. Y'all be good. We'll see you in the next one.